very interesting uh, panel today. Um, let me uh, invite uh, Paul Rains, uh, the CISO of United Nations, uh, Shirish Dandekar. <laughs> He's the head of IT of Tata Teleservices. We have Pravesh Sharma um, from Fidelity. Uh, we have Sunil Mehta from JWT. He's the senior VP at JWT. And Pravesh heads the applications and IT at Fidelity. But I think your designation in my document is wrong, so I did not tell that. <laughs> uh, so what I remember is right, is it? Okay. So, um, so what we'll do is, um, do you want to have a quick intro? Before we get to go, yeah. And um, can we have the microphones, please, on stage? <coughs> yeah. About ourselves or topic? Um, no, about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sunil so Neil Mehta from J. Walter Thompson. I look after the technology operations for South Asia and for the parent company WPP for South Asia as well. Uh, Pravesh Sharma, I head the application security and infrastructure security group in Fidelity. Paul Rains, I'm the CISO for the United Nations Development Program. Uh, we're an organization of roughly uh, 30,000 employees, uh, 177 locations around the world. And uh, our primary mission is uh, you know, helping develop it, uh, helping uh, developing uh, nations uh, provide resiliency and uh, helping to uh, promote human Super rights. Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Shirish Dandekar. I head information security in Tata Tele Services. We are a telecom company. Thank you. Great. So uh, let's get started. So I'll kind of um, create the rules of the game. And we got around half an hour right now. Um, so let's imagine we are a financial services company. And we just got to know from a hacker that our uh, credit card information and the personal information of our users is breached. The hacker has actually given us the proof um, that we are actually breached. And we just got to know right now. Um, so we need to create a plan of action. What do we do immediately? So that's the goal. And uh, of course, um, we have to completely forget that there's a So uh, we, we will, for some time, forget that we have the audience. We'll assume that we are in a closed room and we are having our own meeting. And um, I'm the kind of, probably, the project manager. <laughs> I'll take the notes, create the plan of action. We'll have the actions, owners, and the timelines, basically. So uh, that's the idea. And we'll have in next 30 minutes, because we are in a um, uh, kind of war zone, we will be very fast in terms of doing things which are the most important. That's the high level idea. Um, so let's just start in terms of what do you think are the first few things which we should do right away, for which we can't even lose next one hour? Uh, <clears throat> so the first thing, uh, as, as he mentioned, that the breach has been known. There is a breach. So the first thing I think we should A, get to know whether this breach is actually genuine and let's first authenticate that it's actually a breach and not just a hoax call, like many times it happens. So is there someone in our team who was the first person who noticed and how can we authenticate that this is actually a breach? That's the first thing we need to do. If at all, this is actually proven to be a real breach, then let's first start rolling out the intimations to the top management and get them aware of what we are doing. 
So Sunil, um, uh, it's a real breach. We actually got the proof. I mean, just for your information, okay. we actually got the data of Fair the enough. credit so, card which so the since, hacker sent since to us. Since here we are, mm -hmm. we went one step behind to authenticate. It's been authenticated now that it's yeah. actually a breach. So let's a uh, first we need to a intimate the CI, uh, the CEO and the CFO both together, and tell him the complexity of the breach, and actually tell him what it means in terms of a damage and what we will be doing and how we will go about in terms of getting together the incident response team that we have internally and <clears throat> get a forensics expert internally and a first check out whether we can mitigate internally itself is there a way that we can get the affected machine or servers pulled back or put them offline. The first thing, what are the first steps that we need to do before we start into a big action plan in terms of intimating customers, stakeholders, shareholders, media. I mean, these things, I think first and foremost, we will have to discuss this internally uh, in closed door, look at the size of the breach. It seems to be big because the way it is, and what kind of communication will be going out into the market whereby our shareholder value does not get affected, our business does not get affected, our corporate image does not get affected, our future businesses don't get affected. Uh, it's, it's a big stake that we are into. And I think let's put our heads together. And I would like to A, uh, speak to the CISO first and see what he feels and how we can control the damage and mitigate it. So uh, Sunil, um, communications, I, I took the note of the communications is one of the things. And let's also define very clearly like how do we communicate? Should yes. we uh, call up? And if we call up the CEO, what do we exactly tell and things like that? Uh, but do, do, should we just at a high level for structure, what are the key things, and then go deep into and define those? Yes, sure. So communications sure. is one. What are the other things which we need to kind of take up immediately? I think we should go as per the security incident response plan. No? OK. So and as part of that, I think the communication is, is key part of it. Yeah. Right? Uh, so when you start running an incident as per the security incident response plan, then one of the things that mm. is the, the communication, you know, of course, communication cannot be external at this point of time. But if a breach has been ascertained, then the first thing you need to also do is, since it involves credit card or debit card, so you need to notify the the uh, payment brands, which could be Visa, Mastercard. So notification to we have to in inform Visa, huh? And this is like um, we have to do it right away. What's the contract Absolutely. with Visa? This is so Visa is immediate. Yeah, once okay. once you have ascertained that the breach has actually has happened then okay. it has to be immediate, you know. We, we have ascertained, so we have yep. to do it Absolutely. right away. We have to send Absolutely. the information to yep. Visa. Yep. Okay, so I took a note of notification but, to Visa. But, it, but at this point of time, there is no requirement because we are still going through the incident. So there is no requirement to communicate to customers at this point of time, at this juncture, you know. Okay. But it, it would happen as we move along, you know. Okay, so uh, what are the other things which we need to do? Um, anybody else? Uh, other thing is we need to immediately inform our uh, internal management that is uh, CEO or MD and the CFO. Uh, apart from that, we need to inform uh, public relation or corporate communication team. Okay. So they are also aware because it, by the time it gets, uh, uh, market gets to know that there has some, some security incident had happened and the uh, um, uh, co corporate yeah. communication team will be the first who will get uh, uh, queries from the uh, media. Either it can be news or something else. So they should be also aware saying that yes, something has happened. Uh, second point, equally important from my purse, this thing is we should also involve legal and regulatory team because that legal and regulatory team is also we need to seek help from them uh, in addressing legal and regulatory issues because one is our business partner like uh, MasterCard or Visa card. But at the same time, our regulator also should be informed saying that some incident had happened and we are aware about it. We are taking uh, some uh, action to uh, first to contain that thing. Uh, the uh, impact of that. Okay, so the, you, you, we have to take some measures on uh, um, kind of containment of the attack, huh? Yeah, so that, that will be later. First we are talking about the uh, communication, who should so be... So communication, the, you mentioned about the legal and regu regulatory team also, I took a note of Corporate communication, mm -hmm. then MDA, CFO, uh, this, uh, senior management, so that uh, that is one thing. 
Okay. Uh, I'm not sure at this point of a time our uh, board or something should be uh, kept informed or should be made them aware about. So that's one thing to be discussed, like board yeah, question mark. That, I'll that, put that it there. call will be taken by the uh, MD and senior management yeah. at what time and what this thing the uh, board member should be informed. But from uh, intimation or communication perspective, I feel these are the key stakeholders uh, we should. Yeah. Uh, and again, internal uh, our internal um, uh, users, uh, we need not may have to tell them saying that yes, there is a security incident or something else, but we need to give them some uh, uh, awareness saying that some uh, some systems are not working or we have brought down some systems, uh, systems will not be available for the business purpose and uh, we are working on fixing that issue uh, because we don't want to create the panic. Uh, first we want to avoid is creating the panic uh, uh, among the users as well okay. as the uh, thing. So, this is what. So, uh, Paul, uh, before you joined us as the CISO, you were the CISO of United Nations, right? And uh, you mentioned that you went through a breach like this and a lot of time went into the communication, but there were many other things which we, you, you mentioned had been the key learning. So from your past experience, what are the other things apart from communication uh, which we need to kind of focus right away? Well, to me, the, the, the priority was finding out how did you get hacked? You know, what was the vulnerability that was exploited? What was the um, attack vector that the, per that the uh, hacker used? Um, and then uh, see what, if, uh, uh, what, what information was exposed. You know, he gave you a snapshot of what he had. He may have access to other information. So I think um, I'd have the team working on that first, you know, try to find out what happened. Um, I haven't gone through these types of situations. I, set up where we have uh, two meetings a day, like you would have one uh, in the morning, like at you know 10 o'clock, and say, this is what we're gonna do, and then you have another at uh, like five o'clock, and say, okay, did you do what you said you were gonna do? What were the findings? Okay. And this so is what we're gonna, gonna do tonight. So we are going to have tonight. two meetings, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Yeah, one okay. in the late afternoon. Okay. Um, and then at the meetings, you know, you would have it just uh, restricted to uh, the people. I, to me, until I know what's going on, I'm keeping this very close to my vest in terms of who I let know uh, what happened. You know, I, of course, I'm going to let the CEO know that there was this breach. Uh, my boss, the CIO, um, he'd probably give uh, legal the heads up. Um, since it, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume that uh, legal is going to say, let's prosecute the person that did this, in which case you'll need to start gathering forensics evidence. So. Uh, You'll need to take um, uh, you, you need to take images of the uh, compromised systems. Uh, you'll also need so to do collecting evidence is what you mean, right? That's so right. We collecting have to evidence, do the right. evidence collection. Hmm? Yeah, because if you look at the end game, if this thing goes to a trial, you want to be able to show that the evidence that you gathered is not being corrupted in any way. So you have to show a, a chain of custody for the evidence so that you can okay. present it at the trial and say that it, it's uh, unimpeachable. In other words, they can't say you know, this evidence could be tampered with and shown that this person did it. You have to be able to show that they actually did it. So you need to take I images of the compromised systems and then um, have your uh, team do a, a deep dive analysis on the, on the hard drives to see if there were any uh, artifacts that the hacker left, like uh, any remote access Trojans. So on the technical side, you know, that's what I would concentrate on, just uh, trying to figure out what was the nature of the vulnerability that was exploited and close that vulnerability. Uh, then uh, on the communication side, uh, yeah, this, you gotta communicate with the senior management as to what happened. Uh, and, and then internally, the, the organization is gonna make some type of um, decision on what to tell the press, if anything. Uh, since customer data was involved, you'll have to communicate with your customers so you'll have to tell them there was a, a potential compromise and you'll have to, to think about uh, having identity protection for those uh, clients and you have to think about what the message you want to tell them. So a lot of times uh, I find people will use the same passwords, for example, on uh, several accounts. So if their, their password was exposed, you need to say not only change your password for this account, but like you know, if you use the same password for other accounts, you got to use that, uh, change so that as well. So you suggest that we do a kind of uh, unilateral password change for the entire organization? 
Not for the entire budget. organization, yeah. just, just the systems. clients that were affected. Because yeah, who 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 the accounts? Privileged accounts. Privileged accounts. So I mean, only well, for the I, ones. I understood that it, it was it was clients who had their credit card data, mm -hmm. personal data that was released, right? So my clients aren't going to have privileged accounts. In, I hope they don't. Okay. <laughs> privileged accounts yeah. inside my organization. Yeah. So I'm talking about those guys since their their data was compromised. Okay. The message that you send uh, to your external to clients cost. is that. Mm. There's been this compromise, and if you use that same password on other accounts, like your social networking accounts, like Facebook and Twitter and whatever, you need to go and change that as well. See, okay. I, I think uh, what uh, I would like to add to Paul, uh, what he's saying, we would also need to trigger off our BCP plan, because if our servers are hacked, for example, and if they have to be brought down, what happens to the entire business, because a complete business is dependent on those servers, if it can be that critical, because it has been proven now. Second is, there could be regulatory issues within your own country, certain laws or certain norms that we will have to follow. For example, A, intimating even the local police or a cyber crime cell, if there is one in a particular country or whatever it may be called in that particular country. Um, because you want to A, trace, from where it happened, how it happened, and so on, whilst you're trying to control the damage, you don't want further damage. So you're trying to control even the hacker or, or, or the person that is compromised. And since here it's a demand for ransom, it's, it's a big criminal thing. So you want to get the agencies involved. Uh, again, there, the board needs to decide whether we want to go public on this information, whether it is that sensitive, whether it will cause a big issue, unless and until it is regulatory demanded that you have to disclose this in public even if there is one single breach. There are certain laws and certain regulations where it demands that even one breach you have to report and it goes out in the press. Now for the press thing, uh, typically we have a standard format that we would send it out. Not only to that, even to the customers who have been breached, what kind of a format, how do you win their confidence so that they don't feel threatened or create a stage of panic? As Paul rightly said, there could be passwords, for example, they might be using in common uh, to their other privileged accounts where you may want to warn them in that communication itself, kindly be aware that your password could also be breached. Second. What do you do to win the confidence of your customer is also very important to the business. What can you assure the customer in terms of business continuity and what kind of SOPs can you give them in terms of saying, okay, I will, we will, we as, 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 as a very sensitive company towards customer service and customer support, we will waive off the next one year's credit card fees for every account breached. That's a call which we need to take collectively so that all the compromised data or the customers are still with you. Otherwise, you will lose that business as well. So these are the kind of questions we will be debating in, in the board and taking decisions on that. While simultaneously, there, is, there are three things happening. The forensics team is attacking from their point of view and a regulatory point of view what needs to be collected as evidence. The communication team is working on what needs to be communicated to stakeholders, customers, internal, external, and also to some of the vendors or partners that we may be dependent on. And the third is the regulatory team, the legal and compliance team also working simultaneously on what kind of legal steps we need to take. Great. So, so I, I need some details, so I'll get into that. So you wanted to add something. After that, I, I need to actually get some really operational stuff so that we can start working on it. So I'll ask those questions. Yeah. Um, yes. Since this organization is was processing uh, card information, so mm -hmm. this will come under the purview of PCIDSS, which clearly mandates that you should have uh, the forensics done by a third party organization, you know, which is third party which, forensics. Which they approve, you know. uh -huh. So you you can't just do any forensics and tell them, you know, this is what we have done, you know. Okay. Right. Uh, secondly, we also need to see that w what what are the compromised accounts, because at the end of the day, we need to tell within a specified time to card brands, what are, what are the compromised accounts, you know, so they, they, they can take actions on their side, whether those cards needs to be replaced, disabled, so the card brands needs to do some action on that. Okay. 
So I, I got quite a few things here, and uh, this right now, whatever I created looks a little bit messy. Uh, there's too many things. That I'll try be, to. That can be structured. Uh, yeah, right we'll structure sequence, it. Sequence and, can be done. Yeah. And also, I want to create this set of action items. So, in terms of the most important elements which we kind of noticed until now, I'll just put together that. Um, one is I'm just creating a set of action items. Oh, this. Uh, one is the communications. Um, so let's consider the communications part, and let, I need some details. Like right now, I think it's not a good idea to write an email to the CEO or anybody, right? It's a good idea we just give a call. The first thing is yeah. to give a call. Yeah. First thing, instant, because you don't have time to waste on drafting a mail to tell the CEO. Yeah. The first thing is to make a call to the CEO and the CFO both and tell yeah. them there is a breach. We are investigating, more details to follow. Uh, give us about an hour or half an hour, give them a time frame. Okay. And, and then get to some kind of basic details and say this is the first, uh, first cut draft from what we have understood, more details will follow. Because in the first half an hour, one hour, you may not know everything, how it has been breached and from where, what kind of data has been compromised, what's the damage, total damage, you may not know all that part. But yes, there is a damage. There's a breach, there's a ransom demand. Yeah. That, at least the first communication should go, and I think every hour we should keep on updating them on what's happening. Yeah. So Paul, you wanted to say something, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, one of the things that I like to do before I, I go up the chain with the information is um, have my team assembled and analyze uh, the attack and try to figure out what was the vulnerability that was exploited and what we're doing to close that vulnerability, because that's gonna be one of the first things the senior manager is going to ask, and I would try to uh, don't give out too much details because uh, a lot of times in the in the very beginnings of an incident, you make assumptions about things that later prove to be false, or um, the the vulnerability was larger than what you imagined, and so you look like a fool if you say, "Oh, this was, you know, uh, a single server that was breached," when in fact they had access to a lot of things. You have to know what, what the vulnerability was and if you have that same vulnerability uh, in a in larger area in your organization. So what you're saying is let's not uh, write anything because things will be changing a lot right now. Right. So we'll just call up and inform the CEO. We'll write a mail uh, after we have some assessment, uh, done. Yeah, assessment done and we have it structured in the right way. So, so I think, the, yeah. So, because as Paul said, it will change every hour. Because yeah. you may understand the breach is only so much, and then suddenly after two hours, you'll find out actually the breach is far more, or yeah. maybe not that consequential, or whatever, but you'll so not know uh, immediately. Uh, uh, since we just have 10 minutes, yeah, I'll try to create the action items, sure. like who sure. does what, basically. Uh, timeline, I'm not putting it right now. I think timeline is everything like in next 24 hours, right? Yep. So um, this work, like calling the CEO and the CFO, the CISO can do that, right? I mean, uh, it may be a CISO or it may be a CIO, basically. It CIO. Is, uh, CIO. It may be uh, his direct okay. report is normally okay. what happens, it goes through Fine. his direct report. Depends on the org is, chart. In our case, um, let's consider the CISO is going to handle yeah. this. Huh? True. Um, uh, so that's one. The second thing is um, the next, if I think of the next most important thing, there are quite a lot of stuff which, has, which we need to do. One is attack containment, um, attack assessment. So this is, I'm just putting it in that way, that is, I need somebody to take, you all discussed that somebody should technically assess the extent of attack, right? And what is this thing? So this attack um, impact assessment, assessment. Uh, impact impact assessment. Right. plus, let me add, uh, see impact assessment, uh, I have to give it to the business team, right? So I'm putting it as two different things. Attack assessment, let's give it to our security team. All right, the, technical, uh, basically one I'm of the vulnerabilities the got exposed. Director security. So, director IS, and the impact assessment um, goes to the risk CROs. We just ask the CROs team, they can involve the business. True. So, risk team, huh? Okay. Um, we also need to get the legal guys involved, and um, I don't know much about the Indian legal context, but tomorrow morning at 9.30, I already call the legal guy. So he's going to come tomorrow morning <laughs> at 9.30. Um, so um, so uh, we, we need the legal team 
um, to create a set of action items. We don't know what are those things, but they have to give us the guideline right away, right? But I'm assuming as part of any incident, you know, there'll be a the mailing list which is already identified as in the plan, you know, and that mailing list is anyway copied, you know, in the first mail itself that there's a breach and they all assemble on, on a call and start their own actions, you know. This is what I will assume the first thing would happen, you know. Okay. Okay. So the uh, other thing is... So you don't uh, have to call everyone one by one. It just, it just, everyone gets copied in the first mail itself that there is a breach. You, you come on the bridge or come on the call. Okay, I uh, did not get it entirely. I, I don't know if there's some echo for which I'm, I did not get it. Uh, um, I, I think everybody else got it, right? So we move on. Um, okay, so uh, the legal team is one. The other thing which we talk up, talked about was the? Communications team. Uh, communications. Corporate communication. Uh, corporate communications. Communication to our customers. Internal as well as external, both. Um, Okay, um, I'm in a hurry. My spelling mis I'm doing a lot of spelling mistakes, That's sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I say, uh, it's been my experience that when I, I meet with those guys, you know, the, the people from corporate communications and the people from legal, uh, yeah, they're experts in their area, but on this particular yeah, thing, they're, they're gonna be lost, and they're gonna be looking to you, yeah. like in uh, the legal people may not be familiar with the legislation uh, that affects breaches, and so you may have to be advising them I'm saying, you know, like my case, like, uh, well, you know, in the California database protection law, you've got to notify clients if their data has been compromised. And so you've got to you know, point them in the right direction. And then the communication side, they're going to say, well, what should we be saying in this press release? You know, yes. then you have to say that. And then another thing I, I tell my team, <clears throat> which I think is absolutely critical uh, when you're responding to an incident, because sometimes you get blindsided and you go down a particular alley and you're ignoring other things, you have to keep calling attention to your team, saying, what are we forgetting? Who should we be notifying? Are there other attack vectors that might have been compromised? You know, what, is this a larger problem than what we're looking at? Did we analyze it correctly? Just keep asking that question, is there anything that we're forgetting? And then prompt them with types of things, because otherwise, you do get into a group think and you start going down a little rat hole saying, oh, we think we solved the problem, and then something else comes up and bites you. Okay. So one um, interesting thing is that uh, I actually already contacted um, an expert in the field of forensics, a consultant. He just flew in, and he just reached. So we'll ask Sachin, who is the um, forensics expert. Um, Sachin, uh, can you please just tell from the forensics perspective what are the key things which we should do? We just have five minutes. Um, I don't see here at all. So hmm. business stuff. Yeah. While this is going on, this is half a day is finished. And is the attack still on? I mean, has anybody okay. had an actual assessment to figure out? Um, okay, so that's why we got you. Okay. So that's the reason exactly why we got you. So from the forensics perspective, can you please tell what are the things which we need to do? Like, we have to check whether the attack is going on or not, right? Very good point. I mean, along with all the notification, communication, legal team getting together. Yeah. Okay. So from the forensics perspective, you mentioned that you will give us a who? So six, six, six W's, right? Okay. Much data. Okay. What? Okay. How what? Much? Okay. The extent of the damage, uh, where, from so, where, and to where? So you can give us a report in next 24 hours. We'll start the work right away. Initial tactical assessment report. Like Paul said, things okay. will change afterwards, right? I mean, you, you will okay. learn. Okay. Uh, chains, uh, global chains. Okay. So, um, the mm -hmm. indicate that there was a breach of data. The data was specifically this type of data. Uh, it's uh, working. It's works. Uh, actually, uh, we're yeah. very close to okay. my mouth. Okay. Uh, it was.
was it was this type of data uh, that was breached, and the potential breach occurred due as a result of the exploitation of this particular vulnerability. The vulnerability exists not only on this system, but perhaps a few other systems on the same in, in the same IT infrastructure. And then you need to take undertake damage containment steps to stem the flow of data, uh, the leakage of data before you. St uh, I mean, simultaneously with the other business actions yeah. that you undertake. Because so you are going to do the. I'm just trying to okay. summarize. You hmm? got the first response. Okay. Uh, in terms of first aid, in mm -hmm. terms of containing damage, assessing the initial extent to which the data has been breached, and what type of data has been breached. But at, and then you continue your more strategic, longer term forensic assessment to do the root cause analysis to figure out what needs to be done in the short term and the long term to uh, to avoid such breaches in the future and so on. And and you need it to activate your incident response plan. I mean, you need to have scenarios developed. For the typical kinds of incident okay, so we'll incidents. do the future thing later. So you mentioned about yeah. containment of actions and also. Yeah, but all of that has to be based on certain predefined IR SOPs or IR scenarios that, that someone has drawn up uh, for specifically the kind of incidents that are typically will impact that, that type of an enterprise. Okay, so I have a few questions for you. That is, we'll take the containment actions, we are going to figure out the extent of compromise, are there a few other things which we are missing, etc. Are you also going to help us to collect evidence so that it is going to be, uh, is going to hold in the court of law? How do I collect evidence so that it is? So once again, it depends on what type of incident it is. If the, if the incident, from what I hear, the incident uh, uh, you know, involves data breach of customer data, financial yeah. data. Yeah, yeah, okay. card data. That case, you would have to preserve evidence in a format that is actually acceptable in the court of law. Yep. To, to be with any uh, prosecution, either from your side or from the side of the customer lawsuits and class action lawsuits and so on. So you need to be able to preserve evidence which uh, shows, uh, sh shows what happened uh, and whose data was So done. your team is going to do the evidence collection in that manner. So one thing which I would like to know before your team kind of steps in and helps us is are there some things which you want us not to do so that we don't go and do something bad and you guys come in and you say like, you know what, you guys did some damage. Yes, so is there some things which we should not do? Right, so if you have systems that are to be analyzed live, uh, so if you're doing a live incident response, then you have to be particularly careful about manipulating or inadvertently tampering with the memory, live memory contents, and, and, yeah, the and actual contents of the file system. Correct. So it's best to image hard drives as much as possible, uh, take them offline, do an, uh, do an uh, do a quick analysis in a segregated environment, a lab that you set up specifically in, in, you know, as part of your forensic war room. Uh, wherever live memory analysis is involved or live incident analysis is involved, you have to be super careful that you don't inadvertently uh, A, delete traces of the attacker's activity uh, or close backdoors that may have been present or reboot a system. Simply the act of rebooting a system could potentially, uh, you, you know, Take away all the evidence. Uh, Absolutely. Just, just by re rebooting the system. You will need to halt the system, take a memory dump, and then do the analysis that way. Uh, one, and then all, all that's beside, I mean, is, is, is the system that has been breached potentially, is, the, is it so critical that it has to remain live uh, throughout the duration of the incident response? Or can it actually be brought offline? That's yeah, that's another thing. Like, can we bring and uh, get the system offline? We need to talk to the business team so and check what out. What he's saying is is part of part yeah. of what you need to do much before an incident yeah. happens because you have to plan that proactively. No, but right now also yeah. we need to see. Can we? Uh, yes. Are there some systems which we should bring it down and get yeah. the DR site up? No, because and, some and of when, my he, when he means mm -hmm. bring it down, doesn't mean shut them off. No, it take, just takes yeah. offline, yeah. Take only offline. You can't yeah. reboot. Yeah. Remove the network I mean, wire, you know. Bring it down means I yeah, mean, yeah, like yeah, yeah. go offline yeah. so that I don't get more compromised yeah. with that. Yeah. And check out if I have some other DR sites which can Absolutely. get live so that the business continues. That's a very good point. But that depends hmm. on, like you said, uh, your organization's um, our architecture. Yeah. architecture. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, not so bad. You have uh, a hard standby, that is yeah. the thing. Because uh, yeah. that again depends on how mission critical the system is. Correct. So I also thought of just giving a Google search and see if there's some, um, I mean, checklist online. And I just found out one CISO platform checklist on how to respond to a security <laughs> breach. So no, let me just quickly see if we missed point, something. Uh, whilst you're making your yeah. points, I must yeah. uh, make one other point that typically organizations focus on the business continuity plans more on physical damage like a fire or a flood or any of these kind of attributes rather than look at incident response issues like these in terms of a breach of data, which people don't take so seriously and create scenarios that what if 
a breach happens or a ransom is demanded and so on. This kind of a thing, I, very few organizations actually do a scenario creation BCP plan actually in, in practice and, and, and test it out also. Yeah. So we'll uh, probably do that after our 24 hours. Paul, you wanted to add something? Um, I know we're getting close to the end. Before you end, I just want to say, like you were saying with the Michael Phelps story, you need to prepare beforehand for an incident. So like in my organization, once a quarter, we run a, a mock uh, incident response exercise with our, our global incident response team where we go through a scenario. And by doing that, you, you make people feel not only uh, you know, uh, familiar with the procedures that you use, but you also generate a certain level of confidence that you can handle these things. Because the scenarios we come up with are ones that we've identified in the press that happened. And then we say, if that happened to our organization, how would we respond to it? And then uh, some, a lot of times you'll, you'll find that when you do those exercises, um, people will, like for example, uh, in the last exercise we ran, one person's uh, digital certificate had expired. And so they couldn't communicate you know, using encrypted email with the other people for that reason. So you find a lot of things, as housekeeping things, uh, that people weren't paying attention to and if you, you take care of those up front, when the actual incident happens, then you don't have to stop and get your certificate renewed and then go on with the incident. So Wonderful. I want to add on the, on the experiences, so what you learn during the mock Yeah, so we are going to uh, do this post 24 hours and create some of, of these templates and things like that. So this is the last, we'll just end with his comment and summarize, yes. Actually, in support mm -hmm. of what Paul just said, uh, mm -hmm. I've actually encountered this in real, in the real, in real life, right? Or, uh, it's hilarious. I mean, uh, this organization, one of the world's largest uh, financial institutions, had around 30 scenarios uh, drawn up uh, around a couple of years ago um, at the headquarters level, at, at the top, you know, and then these were disseminated down to the rest of the uh, you know, regional offices and so on. So the headquarters in the U.S. had an incident, and they the incident exactly matched the scenarios. There was no problem with that. There was no, there was no deviation from the scenario itself. Mm -hmm. But when they started with steps one, two, three, they quickly realized that the scenario was so outdated. Uh, so, so rather, the steps were so outdated. For example, they had in place, uh, you know, initiate encrypted email conversation. Uh, the organization has stopped using encrypted email. I mean, there was no system to send an encrypted email. There were, there were references to tools that no longer existed. Uh, there were references to NCASE versions where the steps were outlined in detail, and those steps were now null and void because the NCASE version had moved to version 7, and, and those steps were no longer valid. So, so simple things like this. It's not an updated. It's not an updated document. Yeah. Document yeah. can only be done if you actually run through a scenario, yep. have the people on the ground uh, undertake yeah. those actions. So do more of this kind of tabletop simulation. It has to be a war game. With yeah, war game. Exactly. So uh, this is strategic. We'll do a tactical war game. So thanks, Sachin. Um, I found out one of the checklists which um, once I gave a search on how to respond to breach in first 24 hours, you will find this checklist online. Uh, you can search it in just Google, you will find it. Uh, the first one will be CISO platforms. So um, we have some of these action items. I think I just quickly went through. I think we covered all of these. So then there's something which is also post 24 hours thing, which we'll not discuss now. Now, before we close, I wanted to just ask the audience did we miss something? Do any of you have, I think this was a very fairly comprehensive thing, but if any of you have some thoughts which you feel we missed, let's quickly end it with that. Hmm? Yes. In this scenario, only IR to be involved, number one. Number two, that would two, three teams should be formed, three groups to be formed. Yeah. Three groups to be formed. One is internal facing, one is external facing, one is technology. Technology will take care of all the forum say content, what immediate action, taking of the server down, offline will take care of that. Internal communication team and the war footing basically will stay out to inform the various levels right from top management to the employees of the uh, user, the employees of the, car, of the organization. Different communication should go. And the external will take care of the, uh, of the upper cyber crime, police. And one more thing, third, 
one organization is there, 13, 30 US and all, I'm from Bharat Petroleum, so it is a mandate yeah. for the CSO to inform to the certain yeah. and NICC, IPC, which is the Indian based one, to be informed. But so, yeah. all the community should be same tune. And Mr. Dandeka rightly said that communication purpose is that inform attack has happened. And very positive that we are our, ups, our scaled up the security measures, our postures have been taken care. So community should go such a way that to give an encouragement to the, all these stakeholders, users, and employees, but at the same time telling that yes, hack can happen. Because you said hack has been proved. Yeah. These are so thanks. I think that's a very uh, good point. As you mentioned, we missed out this art thing. So thanks for pointing out this art. So since we are a little bit delayed, we will close with yeah. this. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and, um, so just to summarize, which I will not, I think we have summarized in form of a set of action items. I will try to put together that thing and again add it online over here. Um, we got a fairly decent kind of checklist. Let's then start uh, kind of take, uh, uh, I mean, taking up the actions and have these morning meetings and the evening meetings every day and see how things progress. So I, I'd like to thank all of you. Uh, for joining this. I think this was a very interesting session. I hope you guys liked it, right? Yeah, a big clap for all of you. Huh?